Hello and welcome back to the Farming Simulator Giants Editor Tutorial and this is going to be for Farming Simulator 17 I'm going to be working with this 4x sample mod map here I've just put a field in which I've actually put in some wheat I own this field I've set it up so I'll own the field at the start of the game that's fine I've actually put the dimensions and everything else in so that uh, if I didn't own the field you could actually have a mission but that's not what I want to do in this particular video uh, what I want to do in this video is talk about triggers, cell points specifically, uh, but I'm going to put in some other parts as well just to work with. So I've already exported what I need from another map, from the Goldcrest Valley map. Um, so to start with, what I'm going to do here is actually create myself a new transform group in my cinegraph here. And I don't know why Giant Earth does that, but it does, so you just have to work with it. But the transform group I'm looking for is this one here, and I'm going to rename that, so I'm just going to rename that to triggers there we go now it's fixed itself and what I want to do is actually bring in a couple of parts so I'm just going to go into file imported I'm going to go into my starter map here and I'm going to go into maps I've created a folder called imported which has got what I need in it so what I need to do here is actually go into um, I'm going to start off with my unloading station which is the actual farm trigger this which will be allocated for the silo uh, so with that selected, I'm going to go Control X to cut it. Go into my triggers, transform group, Control V to paste it in. Then again, with it selected, I'm just going to go Edit Interactive Placement and bring it over here closer to where I want it. So I've got everything I need there to work. Just going to lower it down a little bit, just so that I can actually drive up it without getting too many issues. There we go. And then what I'm going to do is go File Import, and I'm going to bring in the actual farm silo to go with it. So again import that, export it, sorry, import it and then highlight it, Control x to cut it, go to my triggers, transform group, Control v and paste it in, again with it highlighted, edit, interactive placement and I'm going to bring it over somewhere close to my actual tip point like so, done. Okay so now that I've got that there, what I want to be able to do is obviously sell my grain as well, so I'm going to actually bring in a sell point, so I'm going to go file, import, go back to my imported, um, my yeah, imported folder here and I've got this unloading station bakery which I will be renaming so I'm going to double click that bring that in and all I'm going to do here is just go over to my actual attributes name here and I'm just going to delete the bakery part and then tab it to like so and then I'm going to control X to cut it control V to paste it into my triggers transform group again with it highlighted in the cinegraph here interactive placement tool and bring it over like so and I'll just lower that again the same so that uh, I can drive up it without having any collision issues. So there we go. Actually what I might do is just move it across a little bit so it's not interfering with this. So now that I've got all that set up in there like so, um, that would work perfectly fine. Um, it would show up exactly what it needs to show up. It will give me my grain and everything else. But if I wanted to actually have this integrated into my map that I'm would be building perhaps maybe and rename some of these parts and add some bits and pieces into it like if I was working with additional uh, fruit types and whatever else then I'd want to actually have various different adjustments made here um, now the way that this is actually set up originally because I've exported these from the Goldcrest Valley map it will be looking in a specific XML to get that information from but that's of no use to me so if I actually go into my unloading station farm the actual tip trigger section here for my grain and everything else. I'm going to expand all that up. The part that I need to look at here is for gameplay. So if I go into there, we've got this trigger pause. So I'm going to click on that. With my user attributes window open here, we've got what we need. So my index is farm underscore silo, and that's fine. And I've obviously got my script that I'm going to be using, the tip trigger on create, that's fine. Shovel target index is for the actual... Um, ability to tip in my grain using my wheel loader shovel or whatever else so that's fine don't need to worry about any of that that's fine but the part I need to adjust here is for my XML file the path file name here would be pointing towards the in-game version the Goldcrest Valley version if you like um, because it's got the dollar data or dollar data however you want to say that so what I want to do here is obviously remove that so I'm just going to click in there and then delete that out there tab across to accept the change now that will point towards my own map XML, um, map 01 XML that I can adjust 
however I want to and rename things. So now that I've done that, I need to do the same again for my <clears throat> cell point, which we can see over here. So again, I'm going to go into the gameplay section here, go into that transform group, go to the trigger, pause, and I've got town bakery. That's just an index. I can change that if I want to, as long as I match it up to whatever I've got within my map one XML, but I'm going to leave it like that. That's perfectly fine. So I've got all the parts there and everything else uh, and where it's going to show up on the map. So the map position index and whatever else. And again, my shovel index and the script that it's going to be using. But again, I need to adjust the map, uh, the XML file path file name. So it points towards my own map 01 XML. So I'm just going to delete the dollar data, dollar data, if you want to say that again, like I did before and tab across to accept the change. Okay. So now that I've got that set up in there, what I need to do is obviously go into my map 01 XML to make those changes. So what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to minimize that down, go into my folder here and I've got the map 01.xml. So if I open that up, we can have a look in here and I've been playing around with some parts in here. So I'm just going to delete some bits that I don't need. So let's just do that. Don't need that. So we'll do that. Actually, I'll leave, I'll leave it like that. That's fine. Okay, so first of all, I've got my farm silo. And again, like I said, I've been playing around with this. But uh, So I've got my farm underscore silo, which is my index. And that matches perfectly fine within my farm underscore silo here. So that that is perfectly fine. No problems whatsoever. That will work as I expected it to. But when we get into our actual um, cell triggers and things like that, we need to have a bit more of a play around here. And this is where it's important that we change that path file name for the XML so that it's looking at this appropriate map 01 XML. Now you can see here, I've already changed some parts in here. So I've actually gone in and we've got our town bakery, which is our cell point, which is the actual map index or the index that's against that. So if I go there, we've got town underscore bakery. So we look here, town underscore bakery. What I've actually done there is just basically changed it from what it was originally to Shai's Bakery. So in game, when I go into there, what I will do is just change that to a capital B. There we go. What it will do is show me in game um, Shai's Bakery, not what it was originally set up as. So that's how you would basically set up your triggers on the map by importing them. Obviously, you need to export them from somewhere first if you don't already have them, if you're building a map. And you're working with a mod map like I am, which is completely blank. And I've, like I said, I've already put the field in everything, but that wasn't there originally. Um, so once you've imported all your bits and pieces, then obviously you would need to make some changes. So you need to look at your indexes here and then go into that, change the path file name for your own XML, and then change what you need to change in here. So literally go in, change the station name to suit whatever name you want it to be. It could be called anything you want it to be, um, and then save that. And then go into game. That's it. Simple as that. So what we'll do is go into game and I'll show you that what it what it actually brings up. It will bring up my farm silo and the types of grain that I've got in there and whatever else. And I can adjust some parts in there if I want to, um, but I'm not going to for this particular video. And then I've got my actual town bakery, which I changed the name of and the actual uh, price drop after a certain type of limit is reached in liters and then how long it takes for that recovery to come back to full price and then all the other parts and whatever else. So if I was to add in some additional fruit types here, then obviously I would need to add in a new field type of perhaps maybe oat, soybean or whatever else. But I'm sorry, not soybean, sorghum or whatever else I'm going to be adding into this particular map. But I'm not going to do again that in this video. Just want to show you how to set the triggers up and how to change the names of those triggers of uh, the actual cell point, if you like, what have we shown up in game. Okay, so now that I've done that, I'm going to close that down. I'm going to save my map here. And then I'm going to exit out. We're going to game and have a look and see what that is all about. So I'll see you in a little bit when we get into game. Okay, so here we are in game and I've just bought a, a Fent 900 series, I think it is, and it's Joskin's trailer here. Um, so we've got our cell point just there like so. And we've also got our farm, farm silo set up just there. If I actually go into the in-game menu here, forget the map because it's based on Goldcrest Valley, this particular mod, mod map, but that's fine. So if I come across to my cell points here in my storage, we've obviously got our farm silo, which has got some parts in it. 
uh, we can have a look and see what that's all about so that's pretty straightforward standard but if you actually look here I've now got my shows bakery which is all got my prices for that particular sell point and the changes that will occur to that particular price structure as I continue to play the game so we just have a look and jump into the tractor here and I'll just come round and we'll have a look I'll get some grain from the silo here because I know that it's got some in it just take some wheat out and show you that it does actually go back into the trigger okay so we'll just come round like so press my R key and we'll just fill, put some in the trailer here probably won't fill it up but we'll just put some in the trailer here and we'll then swing around and just tip it back in again so if I go into the menu you can see it's obviously going down to get zero so if I just swing around like so we can obviously see here we come around and press I on the keyboard and it tips it back in perfectly fine go back into the escape menu and you can see it's all going back in again perfect so if we now come around we'll have a look again we'll get some wheat again that's fine there we go perfect so now if I come around what I'm going to do is actually show you if this particular cell point was across the map somewhere go back in I can actually double click on my cell point here and we actually get our beacon from the sky showing where that cell point is on the map and it does actually flash on the map even though it's not relevant to this particular map because obviously this is again as I said a mod map that's based on Gold Press Valley but uh, just changed slightly because it's a 4x but that's fine so we'll just come around and hopefully as I drive through this it should disappear there we go like so so all that's working perfectly fine and we'll come around and if I now click I we should be able to see in the top right here I am actually selling that product when money's going up and I will then get my income £7,199 perfect so that is all working and you can clearly see it's all gone in as it's meant to go in and it's done what it's meant to do now if we wanted to add in another trigger obviously we could do that and then we'd need to rename it so that's what I'm going to do so we can actually look and see what the price structure will change somewhat for each different additional sell point that you add in and we'll go through the naming process of how we rename each trigger so what I will do is exit back out again now and then we'll put another trigger on the map and have a look at how we do that and then set up the actual name for the trigger and all the rest of it so I'll see you in a little bit when we get back on the desktop okay so here we are back in giant editor again and what I'm going to do now is just basically put in another sell point now I could if I want to just click on this one and make a duplication of it and then move it over but I have found that that's caused errors when I've done it in the past it may be different now as they continue to up, update the game and whatever else and patch it or whatever else but my recommendation to you would be to import a second one don't um, make a duplication of this so if I was to highlight this and go Control D I can make a duplication of it and then drag it across like so and then go into the attributes and change what I needed to change that may work but I have found that that's caused duplication errors within the um, log the error log so I've tried to avoid that now I don't do that anymore what I would recommend to do is actually go back into your file import and then go back into your actual import folder wherever you've set up and import a second one so I'm going to go into the unloading station bakery here and import a second one I'm going to go control X go back into my triggers control V I'm going to now leave that the the same name as that so it will be the unloading station bakery if I wanted to I could also change that to whatever I wanted but for this I'm just going to leave it alone because it's not really relevant it's just the naming in the actual cinegraph so you can tell the difference between each, each one so now what I need to do is go into here and obviously go into my trigger I need to look at the index now if I bring up my map 01 XML here <clears throat> we've already got the town bakery so I can't have two of the same so what I'm going to do is use the grain elevator so I'm going to copy that index name there come back into my giant center session and I'm going to overwrite that and put grain elevator into there like so and tab across to make sure it accepts the change again what we need to do is come down to my 
XML file path file name here and I need to then remove the dollar data dollar data if you want to say that so it looks at my map 01.xml and not the in-game one not the Goldcrest Valley one okay so now that I've got all that set up in there um, I don't need to make any other changes to the actual user attributes all I need to do really now so that I can actually get to it quickly is just bring it over to an area somewhere closer to the field and all the rest of it so I'm just going to go edit interactive placement here and bring it over like so and I'll just lower it down a little bit just so I can drive up it again as before okay so now that I've got all that set up there like so what I may want to do here is change the actual name because I don't particularly want it to be the grain uh, Goldcrest Valley setup so what I'm going to do here is I've got show, shows bakery there so what I might do here is actually change this to Shoys Grain I'll do we'll just call it that that'll be fine so I'm just going to call it that and I'm going to go ahead and save my mapper one XML so we've now got Shoys Bakery and Shoys Grain perfect and all the indexes are set up so I can go ahead and close all that down I can now go ahead and save my giant editor session and we go back in the game and just check that that's actually worked okay so I will see you in a little bit when I get back in again okay so here we are back in game again and you can see that I've also now got another cell point over here so before we do anything further I'll just bring up the menu here <clears throat> and you can now see that I've actually got two cell points Shoys Bakery, Shoys Grain and they do actually have different prices the way that this works within Farm Sim 17 each individual cell point that you create will actually automatically generate a different price um, for whatever grain that you happen to be using so that's fantastic so we've now got all that set up so I could look at this and know that wheat is better sold at the bakery than it is over here so that's fine I haven't obviously got any wheat left so what I'm going to do is grab some barley and I will then I'll do barley actually let's do soybean because that sells better at the grain than it does at the bakery so let's do some soybean so again if I double click on my actual cell point here it beam from the sky highlights that so that's fine all working okay so we'll come around and we'll grab some soybean and we'll tip it into there and again we'll check and we can see that it's actually going down in the actual menu here so it is taking it from a silo perfectly fine there we go all working excellent so now I can come out of here come around to my cell point newly created cell point and tip this in and set it off press I on the keyboard and there we go money's going up so it's all being sold off excellent and if we then drive off and come through our bit here that should disappear hopefully maybe maybe didn't go through it all the way there we go I don't particularly like those things but uh, just so that it to show you that it does actually work you can see it does work so there we go we've got two different cell points on the map now um, with different price structures for each all set up we've also got our farm silo oops not that one farm silo set up so we can actually put our grain into there and whatever else and uh, yeah so there we go how to set up um, your silos and your cell points and change the names in the map 01 XML to whatever you want to call them so you don't end up with the same Goldcrest Valley um, naming that uh, we have in a lot of mod maps because for whatever reason um, so yeah that hopefully explains how you set that up and change the names and point it in the right place to get to your own map 01 XML so it's not using the uh, Goldcrest Valley version Hopefully this was of some help to you guys and uh, thanks very much for watching and I will catch you in the next one.